Right, in this lesson I wanted to show you how to draw um, one of these. Uh, this is one that I've already started. So let me just show you from the beginning. So if you just draw some wavy lines and try and make sure that they go quite close to each other in some bits and go big and small. Um, um, all the way across the page. You can even do one that comes off the page if you like. And then do a wavy line down the middle. Then on each section you want to do a crescent, kind of crescent shapes, but you want to try and keep them coming from this line as much as possible. The more curved they are, the more round your optical illusion effect is going to be, the more 3D they're going to appear. If you do them quite, if you do them quite flat like that, and you do, then they will be much flatter. But if you do them really round, then they're going to give that effect of it being really 3D. So everything on this side of this line you can do in this direction. All the way until you fill up your whole page and it looks something like that. Then if you have a look at your colour wheel uh, that we painted before, I would like your stripes to be harmonious colours. Harmonious colours are the colours next to each other on the colour wheel and then the stripe, the column next door, I'd like you to paint as the complementary colours of these stripes. So for example this is an orange stripe here and orange is complementary if you look on here so where have we got orange the complementary of orange is blue so these stripes here are blue and then yellow the complementary of yellow is purple so I'm using yellow and purple over this side so we've got blue and purple stripes and orange and yellow stripes. So to just to reiterate that is harmonious stripes. These are harmonious stripes but these harmonious stripes are complementary to those ones. And when you use complementary colours it means that they kind of clash and stand out so you can see that this is really bright against this one. Um, whereas these kind of blend into each other. So the ones next to each other, the harmonious colours, blend nicely. So once you've chosen your colours, um, the best way of painting is to do one column at a time. And what I might do is start on... You're going to use every other column with a different colour scheme. So as I've done these ones already, maybe I'll come back to this one. Um, as you can see here, I have started with just a little bit of orange on each of these sides. Um, because I'm trying to create a highlight along the centre and dark down each side to try and create that 3D effect. So what I want is a gradual lightening of the colour and then to this light highlighted point on the top and then a gradual darkening back down into these edges. So these edges then go back into the page and it creates a 3D effect. Um, I will show you how I've done this here. Um, so if I create some of this colour using a, this yellow and orange, it's in there, and this one, what colours have I got? So this is a cadmium yellow which makes a really nice, cadmium yellow makes very nice oranges. So as I've got this yellow here, I'm just going with the yellows. So I'm going to just put these yellows. So that quite mixes between the orange. I might mix it in with some of this yellow. I'm going to use that as the orange and this is the yellow. It's not going to matter too much. You don't have to always be perfect with everything. So I'm just going to put these. And so I'm getting all the pigment into these side bits. And as you can see, sometimes I went a bit wrong. It doesn't really matter too much. Don't, really, don't worry. You don't have to be too perfectionist about it. I'm just putting a little bit of red to make it a bit more orange. Um, getting these orange bits in. You can see that these colours are now going to bleed a bit into each other. And you want to be careful about rubbing too much to go in. This is dry now, the blue, so I can paint next to it. But these colours will bleed into each other. And by bleed, I just mean when it has a pigment spread. The pigment will spread to wherever the water is. So you kind of want to let things dry a little bit. So 
and now all the pigment is in the sides. Now with a clean brush, this is now clean, there's no pigment on here, I can now put that clean water in the centre and I can slowly, now it's beginning to fill up where, every bit where the water is but I can use this to pad out the central bit. So again, just clean water. This bit's dried a bit, so I'm going to just rub it to lift to lift up the pigment. And it's very useful to have some kitchen towel on hand. Now I'm just going to try and keep. And then I've decided to do the. Come on, I don't want this point. Now my pitch is dry and I've cleaned my water and my palette so I'm now ready to do the complementary colours to orange and yellow which are blue and purple. There we go. So something like that. Essentially what you're doing with the wet and dry watercolour technique is using water, um, various amounts of water, so nearly dry or very wet, to move pigment around a page. So you're moving pigment into the areas you want it to and you're using water to, to move that pigment around the page and then let it dry and settle. Um, the good thing about watercolour is that even once it's dry you can still then wet it again and keep, continue to move the pigment. 
So if there's areas afterwards, once you've finished, that you do think, well, that looks a bit of a harsh line, I can just soften up areas and I can go round and neaten bits up if I want to. And I can keep on adding more pigment and taking pigment away. Um, you just want to keep going until you're really happy with it and then stand back and have a look.